Hi, I'm Dennis Kelderman with the Cessna Structures Group. Today we want to look at how to take a mold impression for the evaluation of dents, scratches, gouges, uh, damage to uh, your Citation aircraft or any Cessna model for that matter. Uh, first thing we want to do is develop uh, some sort of a mold release. And I've got here uh, today uh, several examples. You can use LPS products, one, two, or three. You can use the WD-40 if you got it around. I like to use uh, sprayable non-bonding film that you can just spray on the part. And so what we'll do is just spray the area that we are, are going to be evaluating. And then we'll take a rag and wipe it off. Now you don't worry about wiping too much off because it creates such an oily film, any of these products will, that they will prevent the polyester resin from uh, adhering to the structure that we're evaluating. So we'll go ahead and mix up our resin at this time. So we'll take the polyester resin and we want to take an amount that is in keeping with how much we use and it's not really going to be very much. Now when I was a 16 year old I bought a car that had a lot of corrosion issues. and So I bought a can of Bondo which is polyester resin and it said on that instructions to mix a size, a, a golf ball size of polyester and a three inch ribbon of the hardener. And so you have to kind of scale that down to what we're using, but that hasn't changed over the years. And I'll tell you what, you're, you're better off having too much hardener than not enough, especially if it's on a door frame. I like to mix it up on top of a, an inverted bowl like this. It gives you a good surface. Of course, the mixing instructions say that you don't want any streaking. You, want, you don't want to be seeing that, that real light color of the resin or the real dark color. of the hardener. Now our goal here is to take a couple of impressions and it won't take very long for them to cure out. We want to make sure that it's well in the, the area that we're checking as well as slightly beyond because we're going to be measuring our what we call our known good area so it has to be wider than the area that we're checking. Now we're done with that part of it. I've taken a, a bucking bar here and I've already sprayed some, some mold release on it and what I want to do is, is flatten that down slightly for a couple reasons. No, it's too early now. Two reasons. Uh, first is our optical portion of our optical mic is only about three-eighths of an inch from uh, the base so we, we can't have it to where it's up against the, the eyepiece there and, and so it's important that uh, we have this down to size. 
might try something else. The second reason is, my, I said two reasons, the second reason is it's nice if we have the kind of surface that's stable once we flip this uh, impression over so that, that it's not rocking around while we take the impression. I'm going to put a little bit of this on my glove. And I'll just tap that down to make it stable. What I really like about taking mold impressions is uh, especially when I don't have the area to, to place a, a, a micrometer in the, in the form of a depth mic because I've got that wide base and I may not have that room in the instance that I'm considering. Uh, I'm, I think of some of the things that uh, we've evaluated over the years, uh, perhaps like a, a chafe in an engine mount and, and uh, the only way we're going to get access to it is to drill off lots and lots of parts so if I can take a mold impression of that part, remove that mold impression and measure it and find out that it's really quite benign, it's really not a serious issue, we can simply blend it right where it's at. If it's a major issue, I know disassembly is in order. So it's, it's really something that is very, very favorable when we have access issues. Now you can buy actual mold impression kits and I'll tell you that that they're they're made of something different than polyester but and they're a little more flexible uh, years ago when I first started doing mold impressions I was kind of experimenting with some different material and one of those things that I used was silly putty well what I found was that I could make a good mold impression with silly putty but as I pulled it off, I stretched and distorted the actual uh, mold impression that I was taking. So that didn't work very good. What's really good about Bondo is what's really bad about Bondo. And that is that the uh, polyester resin is very brittle. Now, that's going to really bother you. Uh, I was talking to some guys the other day in a shop, and they said that they were doing a mold of impression of a large area. And every time they went to take that mold impression off, uh, they, they broke the mold. So uh, that's something that won't apply to you if you're, if you're doing something fairly small like this. And I'm just going to see if my feeler gauge might help pickle that off. Okay, you see the mold release did its job. And again, the mold released did its job here. Now, I don't know if you can see in our camera or not, but on that first that first impression, we see some red. And that's because I had already marked the depth, the deepest part of that damage with a marker and the polyester resin actually pulled it out, which is an advantage because that gives me a focal point when it comes time to measure. Well, in a future video we'll be measuring these, but today we're taking the mold impression. Remember the critical step of using a non-bonding film. And secondly, uh, to be able to uh, give it the pro profile that's workable uh, for your optical mic. Well, I, I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have any questions or have any structural issues uh, concerning your Cessna aircraft, give us a call at 316-517-6061. Thank you. Bye.